Good evening, Tallahassee. Thank you for tuning in for another show of 4FSU Weather. I am student meteorologist Joshua Rivas. And I'm student meteorologist Tyler Allender. Happy Friday, October 11th. We're cruising right through the month of October. And it's perfectly sunny outside. Not it even is. a cloud in the sky, really. It is. Beautiful day to get outside and enjoy. But the overnight hours are what makes it feel like fall. You still got to deal with a little bit of the warmth in the afternoon hours. Sure. But still not too shabby. Not too bad. Temperatures in the mid 80s in the afternoon, but unfortunately, I'll tell you, okay. uh, what's not so hot is the tropics, right? At least close by. At least, yeah. Well, we have an invest <laughs> in the Atlantic, but it's not going to do anything to us. It's going to stay out to sea if it even survives, which has been the story of this hurricane season. Let's talk about Karen again. It barely even survived the Gulf of Mexico, so it just seems to be the storyline of this hurricane and season. Joshua, why is that? Why why aren't these systems? holding together this year. It's mainly been the dry air and stable air mass has been the big issue this season. Uh, it was supposed to be an active season, but that dry air and uh, has really kicked in this season to kill off most of our storms this yeah. season. We still have about six more weeks, and this time of year with the cold fronts coming through, sometimes tropical systems can form along those, but Especially really. a stalled out front in right. the Gulf of Mexico. That's what we usually start watching for, maybe the Caribbean for late season storms. But right now, we're not looking at a Wilma-type system, which you saw back in 05, but thank goodness for that. But for right now, we're going to send it off to the overview with Mr. Alex Cordero. Thanks very much, guys. And as you can see, no Wilma in sight. Just clear days, cold temperatures in the morning, but a rapid warming and a pleasant weekend ahead. I expect the trend that we're going to be seeing for these next couple of days to, in fact, continue because we're not going to see much of any difference. Right now, over the national satellite and radar, you can see this clear spin. This is a very powerful cyclone up in the northern plains, bringing in a lot of severe weather to places such as North and South Dakota as it moved away from Billings, Montana and now slowly drifting up into the middle of Canada. Current temperatures, though, nice and warm, 84 degrees in Tallahassee, 82 in Quincy, 80 in Carabelle, 80s across the Big Bend region, the warm spot, 86 in Carabelle. Tonight's forecast calling for another chilly night, 56 degrees. It's going to be clear, no clouds in the sky, so I'm sure you can see your favorite constellation or the moon out there. And tomorrow's forecast calling for a rapid warming, 88 degrees, nearing 90. It's going to be a little uncomfortable, but guys, what do you think about that? It's pretty nice, especially in the morning hours. It does get a little toasty in the afternoon with all that sunshine. Plenty of sunshine. Not as much clouds around as we saw early in the week where we had that gloomy Wednesday where there was plenty of clouds around. But yeah, plenty of sunshine today and through the weekend. I'll tell you where they're hoping for some sunshine in India, right? In India, where they have that major hurricane uh, or cyclone, what they call them down the Indian Ocean, uh, Pileen. Uh, forecast maybe in the lake landfalls a Category 5. So if we think about that in our terms, the Category 5 that we know of most recently is Hurricane Andrew back in 1992 that hit South Florida. And this thing is so much bigger. In fact, it's half the size of India. And it's going to cause a pretty big impact for that country. Unfortunately, a lot of problems over there in India. Those poor people, only thoughts and prayers we can send out to those uh, people over in India. That's right. But let's go ahead and take a look at some brighter news. Our weather is great here locally with Raquel. Thanks, Tyler. Well, not much is showing up on our local radar. A few pop-up showers by Valdosta. And just we're going to continue to see this dry and cool pattern for the next few days. But currently right now, we're seeing temperatures in the 80s, high 85 today and low at 58. Again, we're just going to see this pattern. High warm temperatures during the day and cooler temperatures at night. And that is due just to the dry air, the high pressure system located in the southeast is just bringing us. Our humidity, again, is just on the low side. We're at 36%, and we're just going to continue to see this pattern. Currently, we're at 84 in Tallahassee, 82 in Quincy. Along the water, you just see the lower 80s. We're just going to continue to just see these 80s trends all week long. And just, we're going to, again, this illustrates, this graph illustrates just the fluctuation of temperature. Yesterday at 4 p.m., we saw temperatures reach 84 degrees. However, as we head into the evening hours, we just see the steep drop in temperatures and it drops all the way down to 58 degrees by 7 a.m. this morning. 
So the high pressure system located right above Alabama and Georgia is keeping us nice and dry and cool at night and warm during the day. Again, here's the high pressure system I mentioned. It's bringing us a lot of sunshine for the next few days. And if you're going out this weekend, just expect beautiful weather. I know there's a Greek food festival going on and the Asian Experience 2013, just in case you're enjoying that fine cuisine. We do have this look, uh, cold pressure uh, gold front right behind me, and that's actually going to ride over the ridge into the northeast, so we will not see any rain uh, coming from that cold front. For your beach forecast, even uh, although you may not necessarily go to the beach tomorrow, if you do plan, and just like change your mind, and you do plan to go to the beach, expect a beautiful day. Surf will be very low, and you will have a nice breezy day. And take advantage. Tomorrow is a license-free fishing day, so you do not need to have a license to go saltwater fishing. Again, other rules of boating will apply. And if you do have plans to go out tonight, your temperatures will drop to 56 degrees. Just a clear and cool cool night and it will warm up again tomorrow as temperatures will reach to 88 degrees. So you maybe want to just shed off the sweater and put on a nice light tank top. For your seven day forecast, again as I mentioned, you're going to see that pattern of warm temperatures during the day and cooler temperatures at night. So as our seven day forecast indicates, we'll just have beautiful sunshine, sunshiny weather this weekend and we'll start to see a little bit more cloud formation as we head into mid next week. So now I'm going to send it over to Casey with our southeast forecast. Thanks so much, Raquel. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We see on the visible satellite at the present time, um, there's not too much going on, and that's the big weather story in the period. Not too much in terms of weather, except that high pressure is in control. A nice, beautiful weekend is ahead. Now, current conditions across our area, 85 degrees in Tallahassee. We're sitting at um, 82 degrees in areas like Montgomery. In general, we're seeing pretty warm but not really hot conditions as the temperatures start to cool down as we're in the midst of fall now. In terms of your satellite and radar picture across the southeast region, we see there's not too much in terms of precipitation. Again, um, nice conditions, a great time to go outside, um, take a walk across campus, something such as that. Now, water vapor imagery showing in our brown color, color here um, that there is not too much um, that's showing dry air, in fact. Now, in the green, which we don't see too much of, we see some areas of moisture in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Again, very dry, calm conditions across our capital region. Now, current winds across the area, five miles an hour in Tallahassee. Areas to the north and east of Tallahassee, such as Atlanta, more gusty, 13 miles an hour. Now, in terms of your future cast, we see currently high pressure is in control of the weather picture across the Big Bend region. However, we will start to see some area uh, cool front, in fact, try to get a little bit closer, but it's not going to get too close, at least over the next several days, as it tries to transition off into areas such as Missouri, Illinois, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Now, in terms of your forecast, though, for the tonight, in fact, we have 54 degrees. We have in Tallahassee, so a nice cool night. Again, it might be cool to, um, to, to, to take a jacket. Uh, maybe if you're going around the area, a little bit warmer to the north and east, 57 degrees in Atlanta, 70 degrees in New Orleans, even warmer out toward parts of Louisiana, 68 degrees in Shreveport as well. Now, in terms of the forecast for tomorrow, we have 89 degrees in Tallahassee, temperatures up to the north, 83 degrees in Atlanta. Right now, we're going to take a look at the first part of this day in weather history with Tyler and Joshua. This day in weather history talks about Hurricane Floyd in 1987, not the big one that we all remember in 1999, but still kind of interesting because it affected portion of Florida, the Florida Keys. Yeah, uh, I don't remember. I wasn't born back no, for this I one in 1987, <laughs> but uh, it was. It still hit Florida. That's the big story. But uh, only about two tornadoes, which caused some minor damage. So. It wasn't that bad. It was only category one. It's still a hurricane, so it can still do some damage to homes, sure. and mobile homes, and stuff. So, 
Not not the biggest deal, and it was the only one that year to make landfall in the United States. So, so but yeah, no tornadoes causing any damage here in Florida. But I got one word for you for our local forecast: sunshine with a little bit of clouds. Speaking of sunshine and clouds, let's take a look at a picture from the Montana region from our uh, mutual friend Austin Winfield, a meteorolo chief meteorologist up there. These are the Beautiful. Big Belt Mountains. A wonderful picture from up there in Montana. So as you can see those clouds, sunshine, like I said. Sunshine, and we'll be seeing sunshine around here. They call that the big sky country up in Montana. Just a beautiful place, and uh, definitely thanks for sending that in, Austin. Thanks, Austin, for that picture. But now let's go take a look at some more sunshine in the national forecast of Mr. Zach. Hey, thanks, guys. Let's look at your nation right now across the region. You can see a lot of those high temperatures here, 85 in Dallas and 89 in San Antonio. But as we shift out to the west, a lot of those cooler temperatures still coming in with that cold front out there filtering in from Canada, a lot of that Arctic air, and it's going to be continuing for most of the nation into the early next week. So a lot of those areas out there starting to feel the first uh, first taste of fall really and it's really nice out there for them. Satellite and radar as you can see really the only thing in the heartland right now actually more north of the heartland is this big anti-cyclone spinning out there and we'll take a good look at that in a second but also I want to draw your attention to this section right here the remainders of Karen. Karen's bringing some of that heavy rain to Maryland and Yesterday, the Delmarva Peninsula, but now starting to move on up and out of the region. So they'll start to clear up this weekend. Watches and warnings. Want to draw that attention back to that anti-cyclone right there. A tornado watch box, and that's going to continue for a little more into tonight before it expires. A risk of some severe winds and a possible tornado or two cannot be uh, ruled out. But as we move to your nation, here is Karen starting to push out of the region. You can see just a few bands here moving through D.C. into Maryland and a little left over here in Pennsylvania. But we're going to move on over to your uh, southwest. Not much in the four corners, a very dry region. And as we move back to our region, actually, here, not much to talk about. Um, so it's, it's been a rather nice day here for overall for uh, Florida and the Southwest. Finally, let's zoom out. There's that cyclone again. It's going to be pushing on, giving that severe weather tonight and into tomorrow before it pushes uh, northeastward. Uh, likewise, let's talk about your airport delays. Not much across the region. Uh, just a few delays here in the uh, upper northwest or upper midwest excuse me but overall tonight's lows as i step out of the way cooler to the west warmer to the east and tomorrow's forecast still hot to the south before we move on through that cold front into next week but i'm going to send it on over to josh who will tell us about next week here locally thanks zach and uh if you were listening earlier we were talking about how it's cooler in the morning warmer in the afternoon so behind me it almost looks like a mountain valley picture where you see the peak 84 degrees yesterday at 4 p.m. and it plummets down into the 50s overnight. Uh, we had 58 degrees this morning at 7 a.m. and we went right back up into the mid 80s, 84 degrees up in Tallahassee. So again, warm afternoons, nice and pleasant evenings. 85 uh, today in Tallahassee, 58 was the low. So we are a bit above average and below average for our temperatures today. Currently, it is 85 degrees, partly sunny skies, 55 degree dew point, 36 percent humidity. That is pretty dry, so that's why it feels really pleasant out there. Nice wind at five miles an hour, not too gusty, and enough to keep it cool and feel nice outside in the shade. Around the region, 82 in Monticello, 82 in Quincy, 84 in Bainbridge, 84 St. Mark's, 80 in Caribou, and let's switch over, 81 in Perry, 83 in Valdosta, Georgia. The dew points, 55 degrees in Tallahassee, 59 Quincy, 59 Bainbridge, 57 in Mariana, 55 Perry, 57 in Thomasville, so 50s mainly across the region, which is still pretty nice uh, dew point uh, temperatures for this time of year. Satellite and radar, there's nothing really to talk about. Plenty of sunshine, very little clouds in the area, especially here in the Tallahassee region. Nothing really in the southeast either. A few clouds here and there, but it's looking nice out there and looks the same for this weekend. Here's why. we got a high pressure system sitting over the southeast and it's going to be in control. 
Uh, the cold front's coming in from the west, bringing some showers over in the Midwest. But as it reaches this high pressure system, it's not going to do much to it. This high pressure system is pretty strong. This cold front's going to end up moving towards the north with not much effect on us. So our temperatures are not going to change. It's going to feel pleasant outside in the morning again and warm in the afternoon. So not much change to our forecast thanks to that high pressure system. For the beaches, northwest wind 5 to 10 miles an hour, seas 1 foot. So a nice day to go on the uh, boating in the water. So the UV index is 7, high, not too bad though. Bring the sunscreen though just in case. For the boaters, we've got 5 to 10 knot uh, winds, 1 foot seas, smooth to light shop. Plenty of sunshine out there. Enjoy uh, boating out there on the waters tonight. 56 degrees, a little chilly out there, but clear. Not much clouds in the sky, so it's going to keep it a little bit lower. So 56 is going to feel really nice. Light winds as well, that's also key to keep those temperatures down. Tomorrow, the high near 88 degrees is going to feel warm out there. Get in the shade if you want to enjoy the cool air out there and dry air at that. Seven day, looks nice. 88 tomorrow, 88 on Sunday, and we stay in the 80s throughout the week, 60s and upper 50s for lows uh, overnight. Let's head back to the desk with Braden and Casey. All right, thank you, Josh, and we will bring you into part two of this day in weather history back into 1954. That's right. In 1954, there was 6.72 inches of rain um, in 48 hours that flooded the Chicago River. This, in fact, caused $10 million in damage in the Chicago area. Absolutely. You can only imagine when a river overflows, how much damage it can cause, just all the water flowing it up from the river. We'll go even further back to 1846, when the most intense Atlantic hurricane of the 19th century uh, made landfall near Havana and Key West. Absolutely. That, um, in fact, it um, caused um, numerous buildings in Key West to be destroyed. 594 of the 600 buildings, in fact, in that area. This was considered equivalent to a Category 5 hurricane in that area. But right now, um, we'll go ahead and start to transition with Braden as we take a look at um, the areas around Florida. All right. Thank you, Casey. And around Florida, again, just like our area, it's been generally dry. Some fabulous weather. Checking out temperatures right now. 81 in Jacksonville, 84 out in Orlando, 84 as well in Tampa. Just really good temperatures. It's been really nice outside. We've been looking at sunny skies, partly cloudy out in Orlando, but generally sunny over the last couple of days. Dew points keeping it dry, 60 in Orlando, 63 in Tampa. Dew points a good indicator of the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. The temperature at which dew forms would be the dew point temperature. And as you can see, nowhere near the temperatures that we have reached today out in the Sunshine State keeping it dry, keeping it comfortable over the last couple of days. Water vapor imagery, you could see the darker gray showing all this dry air enveloping our area as well as Georgia and Alabama. This ridge of high pressure that we've been talking about for the whole show really has been controlling our weather, not giving us much in precipitation. It's been very nice outside. Winds basically coming out of the east and central and southern Florida, a little breezy down in West Palm Beach at about 10 miles an hour. But back home in Tallahassee, looking at a five mile an hour wind coming out of the north. And that is where we are getting those cool temperatures at night, temperatures dipping into the 50s locally for your mornings. Looking at local satellite and radar real quick before we break you on your radar tour. Very clear, very little to speak of, just dry air, sunny skies. It looks Looks beautiful around the whole southeast you can see right up there right above me you can see the remnants of tropical storm Karen which is basically a nor'easter bringing nightmares up to the coast in the northeast but again down here by Florida looking pretty dry futurecast radar again showing this ridge of high pressure in control as we put this into motion this low pressure system is going to move up but it will kind of ride the high pressure system and bring us continually nice weather because that cold front really isn't going to dip down it's just going to go ahead and flip over i guess you could say the high pressure system tonight's forecast looking at 67 in orlando tampa as well 69 down in fort myers a little warmer down in key west obviously surrounded by water 77 degrees 60 54 i'm sorry back home in tallahassee looking at those nice temperatures 
Tomorrow's forecast, looking at 88 in Orlando, 87 in Tampa, and you can see overall just the temperature spread of 20 to 30 degrees, and we'll tell you where that's coming from. You have this clear air, and you have this air coming into the north from Tallahassee, which are keeping our temperatures cool overnight, but since that clear air, sunny skies bringing our temperatures up, which is why we're getting lows in the mid-50s and highs in the mid to upper 80s, almost a 30-degree temperature spread. Again, 85 in Jacksonville and 80 nine for your high tomorrow in Tallahassee. We'll go ahead and send it out to your tropics and a little bit in your tri-state with Alex. All righty. Well, the main story here is not anywhere in the Atlantic. I'm going to get to that in just a bit, but another recap. We've only made it up to the K-storm, which is about average, but for our forecast, not looking so high, especially with the only amount of hurricanes we've had being Umberto and Ingrid, so only two Category 1 hurricanes. And where do these hurricanes like to form nowadays? They like to form along the Gulf Stream and the Gulf of Mexico, where waters are the warmest and atmosphere conditions are more favorable. They tend to follow this upward path because at this time of year, cold fronts, as we've been talking about, travel across the eastern seaboard and lift storms up. As you can see, here's one cold front right here associated with the remnants, re the remnants of Karen. But the big story in the Atlantic, not so big everywhere else, is this Big mass um, tropical disturbance. We're giving it about a 40% chance of development over the next five days. Not looking so impressive. However, you can clearly see there is some sort of spin trying to get its act together right over here. And if it does get its act together, it's going to trek towards the Lesser Antilles. And it's too far right now to tell if it will impact our eastern seaboard. But we, of course, we will keep an eye on to that. Now, right now, we have two really big balls of convection. Convection being thunderstorms. And where these systems are, are in the western Pacific. Right now, this is a typhoon impacting the Philippines at category three strength and this is a tropical storm that is going to start drifting off towards the northwest in the western Pacific but the big story the very big story that everyone's been talking about is this massive super cyclonic storm Phalene, and right now it is a category five. You can clearly see that little eye when the frame gets to it. That's showing a lot of strength. This system is packing winds around 160 miles an hour enough to blow down houses with relative ease, and it is going towards a highly populated area of India as it continues to strengthen in the Bay of Bengal. And where does this system go? Right now, category five system slowly drifting towards the northwest, expected to make landfall as a category five or a high end category four storm. Some time tomorrow and rapidly weakened but bringing a bunch of rainfall a lot of inches we're seeing anywhere up to maybe 30 inches in this part of India so everyone over there hopefully they are ready for this because this is going to be quite a nightmare for the folks over there in India and what else do we have we also have another typhoon Nari right now impacting the Philippines and what it's going to do is weaken right now it's when it's sitting at winds at 105 miles an hour and it's going to weaken as it drifts and goes and closes in on anywhere from northern Vietnam to southern Vietnam so we make sure everyone over there if you have any loved ones over on the other side of the pond make sure that they are prepared for this because this looks like it might be a category three equivalent of a hurricane as the time it makes landfall what we want got to know is whether or not these are in the atlantic or pacific they are still the same thing they are very strong storms and we got to make sure that anyone out there is watching and making sure that we are well aware of our surroundings now let's make it back to the desk Thanks so much, Alex. Absolutely. You're talking there about super, um, super cyclone storm Phalene. And um, this storm, in fact, compares to the size of Hurricane Katrina. Yes, not just the size of Hurricane Katrina, but half the size of India, which is where we'll be making landfall over the next 12 to 24 hours. You could see just extreme rainfall coming for India. Such a huge storm. Absolutely. Um, maximum sustained winds currently at 160 miles an hour, and it has increased in intensity by 80 miles per hour in just the last 18 hours. Very serious situation in those areas. Um, over one, mil uh, 1 billion people, in fact, are at risk. Absolutely, and we keep making the references to Hurricane Katrina. Just the rapid intensification aspect, the size, brings back so many memories of back in New Orleans 2005. We'll go ahead and bring it back to your local weather now for a final look with Tyler. Thanks so much, guys. And the visible satellite picture is starting to darken now because, well, we're losing that daylight. But it kind of sums it up well with these patchy clouds moving through. But overall, a really nice day, good day to... Uh, bring down the windows in your car and listen to Luke Bryan. All the country fans, you're not listening to Luke Bryan tonight, you're going to the concert. 
that's in town in Tallahassee tonight. But anyway, temperatures, you can see the swing in temperatures that we've seen today from the 80s yesterday and this afternoon into the 60s this morning, back into the mid 80s today. So really pretty stable conditions from day to day. We're in that time of year where not much change happens this time of year with lows in the 50s and 60s and highs in the 80s. 85 was the high temperature today. 58 was the morning low. You can see really surprisingly that's about where we should be for this October 11th. And currently out there we're seeing temperatures in the mid 80s. It's comfortable, 55 degrees with the 36 percent humidity. So it's fairly dry as well. No moisture to be found. No rain chances in the forecast either. Currently, everyone's sitting in the 80s, low to mid 80s region wide, from 81 in Thomasville to 85 here in the capital city to 83 in St. Mark's. Tomorrow, I think we'll be a smidge warmer, closer to 90 in spots. The normally normally warmer spots, I think, will kind of come close to 90 degrees. Dew points, emphasizing the dry air in place, 50s and 60s. In other words, you don't have to worry about really feeling sticky as you step outside on this Friday night and really all weekend long that's going to be the story with these northerly winds coming down five maybe ten miles an hour at times it's going to be nice to do outdoor activities all weekend long in fact you look at the satellite and radar picture it's hard to tell for the first few frames that this is even a live map because there's no clouds there's a little bit of rain popping up well to our west but that's not coming anywhere close to the Big Bend this weekend high pressures and control and so that means very tranquil conditions, mostly sunny skies. Our next storm system really isn't going to be approaching our area anytime soon. So until that happens, high pressure will remain anchored firmly in control and we'll be seeing no problems in the weather department. Tonight, clear overnight with uh, nice cool conditions, temperatures in the mid 50s. If you're real sensitive, you might need that light jacket, but I think it's going to be very pleasant to many of us and we'll warm up in a hurry tomorrow afternoon. Mainly clear skies with temperatures in the low 80s by noon, upper 80s by 5. Bainbridge, you might hear, hit 90 degrees any place that is the normally warmer spots. I think you could come very close to 90 degrees. Here's your seven day forecast. It's going to be nice in the morning, warm in the afternoon. That's the trend pretty much through the period. Look at that. No rain chance all the way into next week. Looking very nice if I do say so myself. Let's go ahead and finish out the show now with Braden and Casey. All right, thank you, Tyler. And we'll go ahead and start with a quick reminder that a tornado watch remains in effect for areas of North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota. So you, if you are there, again, make sure you practice caution. But we'll bring it back home. Tonight is Seminole Madness. Absolutely, Braden. That's at 7 o'clock, so in just a little over 30 minutes at the Donald L. Tucker Center here in Tallahassee. Um, if you go, you get five loyalty points. Um, so make sure you go out. It's going to be beautiful weather conditions. It's to go out and maybe a little cool just maybe bring a light jacket to that. And also, um, we have the Greek Food Festival going on. That um, beautiful weather for that as well. Absolutely. The Greek Fest Food Festival is going to go beyond oh, all weekend. Uh, back to Seminole Madness real quick. It's going to be a great opportunity, a great way to get loyalty points for those high-demand games. Also, to meet the players, the coaches, maybe get a couple autographs. It'll be nice. And, of course, the weather's going to be looking beautiful. Your seven-day is sitting right next to us right now. Looking at temperatures in the 50s, in the lower 80s for most of the week, lows in the 50s. It's going to be a great weekend. Absolutely. Ties in the mid to upper 80s, but make sure you have to um, like us on Facebook.com slash FSU Weather. You can follow us on Twitter.com slash FSU Weather. And also, you can watch the FSU Weather show at any time on Livestream.com slash FSU Weather. I'm Casey Cloud. And I'm Braden Robinson. You guys have a great evening. We are for you, for us for FSU.